I am Chris Satney. The visit to schools commenced at the Camille Henry Memorial, where several primary schools congregated to welcome the royal couple with a small ceremony which included a few performances from students. The Earl and Countess of Wessex were elated to meet with the boys and girls of the various schools present after the ceremony, prompting much conversation, laughter, and picture-perfect moments with the little ones. Prince Edward, who is the fourth offspring of Queen Elizabeth II and the youngest brother of Prince Charles, was quite thankful for the warm reception from the gathering of primary school students. Thank you so much for, uh, for the wonderful welcome today. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And a particular thank you to all the performers, um, to the poem readers, to the dancers, and I suspect it was the drummers that won it today. But very good, <laughs> excellent, really well done. Listen, and we wish you all the very best for the future because you, boys and girls, you are our futures. And so it is really important that we listen and support you as you grow up because you're going to be here one day leading this country. Parliamentary Secretary Senator Honourable Pauline Antoine Prosper spoke on behalf of the Minister of Education, Honourable Sean Edward, who was unable to attend the ceremony because of his participation in the 2022-2023 budget debate. Senator Antoine Prosper expressed the Ministry's gratitude for the visit of the royal couple, saying these experiences will only help to deepen international relations with Britain. And at the same time, add to the rich cultural heritage that has molded us into a people whose values allow us to thrive as an independent nation. To you students, this is a moment that you will treasure for your entire lifetime. And I am Daniel Dubois. The tour continued to the Patricia James Secondary School, where Prince Edward and Princess Sophie, Earl and Countess of Wessex, were joined by secondary school students from various schools from District 2. Ministry of Education's Permanent Secretary, Michelle Charles, welcomed the royal couple to the brief ceremony held in their honor, citing the ministry's gratitude to host representatives from the Crown as the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic have lessened over the past few weeks. I am elated that we at the Ministry of Education are in a position to host this event as we, are, as we can all understand the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic continues to have on our education system. It is thrilling, however, that we are able to take pause from the usual demands and challenges associated with work and school life and gather to commemorate this auspicious occasion. This, of course, speaks to our resilience as a Caribbean people. We strive and we overcome. And it is with this tenacity of spirit we stand as proud St. Lucian citizens, welcoming all of you here within our midst. Students got the opportunity to interact and engage the royals in a brief question and answer session, covering themes such as women equality, climate change, and more inclusivity among minority groups. Students were eager and enthusiastic. We all have a lot to learn from each other. So in the Western world, in the Northern Hemisphere, we have as much to learn from our Caribbean sisters as we do from each other. So in empowering Caribbean women to have more places on these international fora gives you a voice and gives you a chance to impact your own countries as well as impact positively ours. The royals ended the tour of St. Lucia and indeed the tour of the Caribbean with a tree planting exercise at the Pigeon Island National Landmark with a group of students from the Bishop Charles Gache ROC Primary School, members of student environmental clubs, and the National Trust of St. Lucia.